This is a sample audio recording of Violet Mackerel's Pocket Protest, written by Anna Branford. Chapter 1. The Oak Tree Violet Mackerel is under the big old oak tree at Clover Park. She is collecting acorns with Rose, her very good friend and neighbor. So far, they have about 20 each, but they are still looking for more, mainly because it is nice to be under the oak tree where the sun filters through yellowish green, the smells are musty and earthy, and small creatures sometimes rustle and scurry in the leaves. Just as their pockets are getting too full to hold any more acorns, a truck pulls up and two people get out. They are dressed in matching green overalls with red writing that says Johnson's Tree Services. Violet wonders what sort of work they might do. Rose guesses that tree servicers might be a bit like waiters at a restaurant, except instead of bringing drinks in tall glasses on trays, they bring them in buckets and hoses. Violet suspects they could be a bit like doctors, only instead of counting heartbeats and listening to deep breaths, they count acorns and listen to rustling leaves. They both think that when they are older, they might like to have matching overalls that say Violet and Rose's tree services. The people in the van walk over to the tree, so Rose is able to ask them what they do instead of guessing. They say that their work isn't much like being a waiter or a doctor, but they don't really have time to explain what it is like. Mainly, they just need Violet and Rose to move away so they can measure different parts of the tree and take pictures without being disturbed. Vincent is sitting nearby on a wooden bench reading a book called Honeymooning on a Shoestring. He and Violet's mama got married quite a while ago now, but there wasn't enough money for a honeymoon, so they are thinking of having a late one. Violet has had lots of good ideas for them, like scuba diving in the ocean or possibly going to space. But there's still not much money for a honeymoon, especially not one that involves diving equipment or rockets. So they definitely need the shoestring sort. That is why Vincent and Violet borrowed the book from the library. Violet and Rose both feel a bit shy after being asked to move away from the oak tree. So they join Vincent on the bench and look at the book with him. The bench is their second favorite place in the park because it has a nice goldish plaque that says, In Memory of Eva. It twinkles as if the dusty old wood is wearing a brooch. They like wondering who Eva might have been. What do you think those people are doing? Violet asks Vincent. But before he can answer, the woman in the overalls calls out and asks if there is a gas station nearby. Vincent is a bit deaf, so he has to go up quite close to hear her question properly and ends up talking with them for a little while. Did they tell you anything? asks Rose when he joins them back on the bench with a slight frown on his face. Yes, said Vincent. They told me they've been hired to cut down the oak tree. Cut it down? checks Violet. Cut it right down? double checks Rose. Vincent nods. There is going to be a parking lot built over this part of the park, and they need to clear the land before laying down the concrete. They can't do that, says Violet. Unfortunately, they can, says Vincent. They're coming back in two weeks to do the job. It is a horrible surprise. Before leaving, the people from Johnson's Tree Services bang a big sign onto the tree with a noisy hammer. It says... Public notice. Tree removal. This is the end of the sample audio recording of Violet Mackerel's Pocket Protest, written by Anna Branford. I hope you enjoy it, and thanks for listening.